you today. Here we are at the start of a brand new week. I'm sitting here with my morning coffee and spending a moment in the scripture thinking about how to share today some hope, some encouragement for all of us. Last week when we left off on Friday, we talked about Luke chapter 18 verse 1 where Jesus turns to his disciples and tells them that they should always pray and not give up. And as I've been thinking about that since then, uh, I thought the question kind of comes to mind. So how do we pray? Where do we find the words? How do we focus our prayers? What is it that we should and can say to the Lord? And of course, as we contemplate such a thought, what immediately comes to mind is the structure of the Lord's Prayer, which we find in two places in the scripture. The one I'm going to refer to today is from Matthew chapter 6 part of Jesus's Sermon on the Mount, he gives some instruction on how to pray and how to come to the Lord in secret and just get alone, you and and Father God together. And then in verse 9, he says, and when you pray, pray like this. And then he gives us what we classically refer to then as the Lord's Prayer. All this week, what I'd like to do is just take that prayer in sections and just break it down verse by verse. We'll do that each morning throughout the week and uh, see what Jesus himself has to tell us about prayer. This is a season right now when many people are turning to the Lord, when many of people are looking to him and bringing them the concerns of their heart. And I'm so thankful that the Lord is our strong refuge, that he cares for each of us and is concerned about our circumstances because of his great love for us. So it's good and right that we should come before him and bring him the concerns of our heart. Perhaps the Lord's Prayer, as we take it section by section, can give us some particular insight about how we can approach God in prayer. With that in mind, listen to Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. Jesus, who's been speaking for a while here, turns now and says, This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. It's pretty interesting that he would begin his prayer like that. In those particular days, the uh, religious leaders and those that taught in the synagogues, um, they were very reverent with how they referred to God. In fact, they wanted to be careful, not even accidentally, to take the Lord's name in vain. In the Old Testament, The name for God is written with just four letters. That translates to English as the letter Y, the letter H, the letter W, and again the letter H. The idea is is that they took the middle letters out um, so that no one could even accidentally take the Lord's name in vain. That's how they revered the Lord's name. And so throughout their prayers throughout other places in scripture instead of referring to the lord by name by the way that we would use an english word yahweh to represent that or uh, the y is sometimes understood to be a j and if we insert letters back into it we also get the name jehovah both of those come from that to that set of letters from the old testament but so as not to take even accidentally the lord's name in vain the uh, religious leaders would use titles for God. They would call him the All-Sufficient One or El Shaddai. They would call him the Almighty God. They would call him the Sovereign Lord. They would use um, an Aramaic word, Adonai, which simply means Master or Lord. Or sometimes you might hear uh, a Hebrew prayer translated to English, and Adonai will get uh, translated as King of the Universe. And so in the time of Christ, these were the ways that people would address God. Lord, Master, Sovereign Lord, King of the Universe. And uh, that was very customary. Of course, all of that is appropriate. It's right. That is all, uh, those are all examples of who God is and what they represent various aspects of his nature. So it's quite interesting then in Matthew 6 as Jesus begins to talk to the crowd about their prayer life and how it's not just meant to be public ways of trying to impress others with your prayers, but it's meant to be private. 
a moment between just us and God himself. And then Jesus says, when you pray, pray like this. And to everyone's surprise, he doesn't use a title. He simply says, Father in heaven. This recognition that our relationship with God is meant to be personal, intimate. The idea of a loving father, the best father ever, the way a father should be. That's how we are meant to understand and relate to God. I don't know what your relationship might have been like with your earthly dad. Some people have great, wonderful, warm, supportive relationships. Others go through seasons of struggle. Of course, no person is perfect and everyone makes mistakes. And sometimes we are left with the pain of those mistakes in our heart. Jesus wants you to know that regardless of your earthly history, you have the best father ever, a father from heaven, a father who made you, who loves you entirely. And as we approach God in prayer, we don't have to be afraid of him. We don't have to try to impress him. We don't have to be so reverent in, in of course, we, we want to honor God, but, but we don't have to think that he is so, somehow so beyond us or so distant from us. God himself has closed that distance. And Jesus tells us to know him as father, to relate to him as father. When you go to prayer today, in fact, when we pray in just a few moments, we're going to come to him as our father knowing that he loves us, that he's for us and not against us. And even on our worst day, when we've made the most mistakes ever, he's not there just to correct us. He is there to strengthen, hold, redeem, make us new, and give us a fresh start. He loves you. He loves us all. So that's my encouragement for you today. You have a Heavenly Father who loves you. And as we go to him in prayer, recognize him, is the God who embraces us as his children. He loves us so much. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we honor you today. Even as Jesus told us to pray, we look to you as Father, and we say you are holy. Hallowed is your name. There's, there's no more holy or right way to know you than by the name Father. We thank you that you embrace us with open arms. Lord, we recognize that there are often times when we don't measure up. We succumb to failures and fears and weaknesses. And yet you respond to us with grace and strength. You give us correction, but mostly you come, Lord, to bring restoration and healing and help us turn to the right. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you that every, even what seems to be the most minute of concerns matters to you because of your great love for us. Thank you for calling us your kids. We look to you today as the best father ever. Would you come alongside each and every single one of us? Would you whisper in our ear? Would you help us to see you as the God who loves us? who draws close as a father. Thank you for your loving arms of support. Thank you for being someone we can continually depend on and find life, hope, strength, and love. Thanks for being with us today and all through the day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You have a heavenly father who loves you. Let's all reach out and depend on him today and every day. If you're part of our Friendship Village family on Channel 900, you can see these videos three times a day. That's the plan, 8 in the morning, 4.30 in the afternoon, and again at 8 at night. If you're watching online, you can look up these videos on any search engine. Just type in Encouraging Words with Burt Campbell. On YouTube, you'll see the listings come up. You can click right here to sub subscribe and so that you have... Uh, the notice of when new videos come out. And if you'd like to see any of our, our previous ones, right here below, click on the playlist. It's good to be with you today. Have a fantastic day in the Lord. Tomorrow we'll talk about the next portion of uh, the Lord's Prayer. Thanks for being with us. 